I played Outer Wilds for the first time on January 8th, 2021, after getting myself a decent PC just before I started a new job. I didn't know much about it, so I hopped in clueless of what I was about to discover. It left a mark on me, forever, and it became one of my favorite games of all time. My actual favorite, depending on the day you ask me. And so, now that I've beaten the game a dozen times, I get the joy to see YouTubers, streamers and friends play it for the first time and relieve some of that same magic through their experience. It is truly the epitome of I wish I would get my memory erased so I could play it again for the first time. So, is Outer Wilds a game you can only play once? Well, of course not. A game you can only play once literally refers to some artsy titles in which you experience the game and as soon as that's over or you die, that's it. You are locked out of it. I guess technically a game you could only play once would need to destroy itself upon ending, as you can always go to a different computer and replace some of these titles, but we, we are missing the point here. Games you can only play once commonly refers to video games which have a first blind playthrough that, at least, plays a lot differently than the second one, mainly because of the knowledge you have gathered during your first playthrough. You can always replay Outer Wilds, but you cannot unlearn its secrets or connect the dots of what happened to the Nomai again. You can still explore the cosmos, feel the sense of awe and wonder that most fear sets, but there is a core experience you just cannot get anymore. This new genre that has been brewing for some time is well renowned for this. Metroid Brainias. Our Wilds, Tonic, Animal Well, Fest before all that. All of them rely on the acquirement of knowledge to progress through the story. You may get new items, new mechanics, but the main way of moving forward is learning how they work and using them in ways you wouldn't even imagine in the beginning. What happens if I jump on the disc in Animal Well? How do I get into the Quantum Moon? What if I kill everyone in the game? Undertale also falls into the category of games you can only play once, or, or thrice depending on how you look on it, but the reasons it does for so are slightly different. In Toby Fox's game, the narrative is the main point that makes the first playthrough so memorable. And I do mean the narrative, not necessarily the story, which is really good of course, but it is the way in which it flips the table on conventional RPG norms and plays with your pre-established bias on how games work that makes it a unique and charming experience. The combat system is the primary example for this. Players are used to have the option to fight, escape, use objects and sometimes an extra action in most turn-based RPGs. But suddenly, in Undertale, it was an option to just... talk. Not only that, but convincing the other one that fighting wasn't worth it was the soul of the game and it unveiled as these little stories that came out of the combat system. It may not seem impressive now, perhaps, but in 2015 it was astonishing to say the least. Hey, wait for a second. I know we have been talking about a lot of video games this video. Can you guess where you can find all of them at a better price? Correct! In Instant Gaming, our one and only gaming key store that lets you grab your favorite games for a fraction of its cost. From hidden indie games to the latest AAA titles, they have an incredible selection with unbeatable discounts. So, if you're looking to save while discovering new adventures that can only be experienced once, check out Instant Gaming. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video and helping us keep bringing you more content. Back to the video. Return of the Oberdin is also a good example of how detective games, except Shadows of Doubt, are often guilty of this because of the implicit core gameplay of the game. You are trying to solve a mystery and, once that is solved, you're done. 
you cannot ask for another mystery. And replaying Lucas Pope's game, although it can be rewarding, it does not provide the same experience. And just to be clear, nobody is asking it to. In the same way, the Stanley Parable or the Beginner's Guide also lose their magic once you reach their conclusion. Someone could say that there are a lot of games that don't have that much replayability. Story-driven games like The Last of Us, Bioshock, or the latest Spider-Man game don't offer that much once you have completed them. Yes, I know you can go for higher difficulties, trophies, or side content, but that is not the point. What I'm trying to say is that even though these games do not have any characteristic resembling titles like Animal Well or Outer Wilds, they do have a unique story to tell which, of course, will not have the same impact on your second playthrough. Much like a movie, knowing the plot can affect the way in which you interact with it, for better or for worse. So what about Elden Ring? I feel like as time goes by, a certain feeling is becoming apparent, in which some players are starting to notice that From Software's latest title is not as replayable as it seems. Well, it is, of course it is, but the first time you enter the lands between is very different from any following playthrough. Suddenly, most dungeons don't matter anymore. You won't find random NPCs while looking for other stuff, you know what bosses will do, and so on. How is this any different from the games I talked about in the beginning of the video? Are multiplayer games like FIFA or <laughs> FC Football, I guess, uh, of course, yeah, that, that's, that's a cool name, yeah, uh, or League of Legends or, or Call of Duty, the only games in which the first blind experience isn't that much special? Well. I think that what makes these games stand out is that they can be ruined without having you play them. If I explain during the next minute or so all the main secrets in Outer Wilds, I would permanently injure your first experience, if you yet haven't played this masterpiece. That's the main difference. I can tell you who are the main bosses in Elden Ring, or what happens in the end of The Last of Us Part 2. But that wouldn't ruin the game in the way it happens with the others I mentioned. So, in conclusion, I feel like games that you can only play once are those which offer such a unique experience, one that relies so heavily on the element of surprise, or a system of progression which can be unlearned in any way whatsoever, that the first time you play them necessarily is the last one you'll play that way. So. When someone tells you, hey, this game can only be played once, so the less you know, the better. You can take it as a label for what a good-ass game that would be. But what do you think? Is there any game that you can play only once that you would recommend to me? Do you think the definition of it is correct, or it should be more literal? As always, tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. I would love to read them. Until we meet again.